is first we all know of the approach pre-built systems take especially over the years when it comes to vendors such as Dell, HP and Apple. You may at first be besieged by choices to what options and specifications due to hardware shall we call them upgrade paths are made available upon trying to navigate just a simple choice in which laptop would suit your means and or budget associately. Today we take for a test drive with these parameters in mind the Dell Inspiron 6400 that I have had for a number of years now and is in fact the first laptop that I ever repaired and was this repair a doozy. From literally waste garbage on the side of the street I managed to find both this 6400 and the smaller screen variant of this laptop that allowed for the transplant of specific parts from one to other and vice versa so as to be left with a functioning laptop that did not look too shabby. Had it still been 2006 though? With age the laptop does look a little on the worn side of the spectrum but don't let this fool you as we are about to discover whether this 15 years old legacy relic can still function within reason in a Windows 10 environment today. So for the specs original specs were as follows but due to the ability of newer technology and hardware availability, from some spare stuff lying about, I saw it fit to upgrade to the best of my potential the Dell Inspiron 6400 to give it as much a fighting chance as we could muster. Original Specs, Dell Inspiron 6400 Firstly, a BIOS update was urgently required and this update would bring the availability to be able to utilize stronger CPUs making them compatible with the laptop. This update was released in June of 2007, while the first Dell Inspiron 6400 off the line were released back in 2006. Known as BIOS A17 was installed successfully, few. The processor type, Intel Core 2 Duo processor current clock speed 1.83 GHz dual core present. Memory RAM installed 4096 MB. Memory available 3327 MB. Memory speed 667 MHz. Memory technology DDR2 so dim RAM. Due to the amount of memory being assigned for the system use, memory available is less than memory installed. That's why in Windows when looking at the info screen, about PC's section in settings, it will mention the usable amount of RAM as opposed to the 4 gigabits that has been successfully installed on the laptop. Primary drive, hard drive, 120 gigabits HDD but in actual fact it is a fully fledged SSD Kingston 120 gigabits drive that was lying unutilized. Video controller, ATI Mobility Radial Nex 1300. Video memory is 64 megabytes. There was a 256 megabytes variant that would have performed much better with age and giveth just that little more juice pertaining to what we see here when loading and rendering the video applicable. Panel type, 15.4 inch wide LCD. Native resolution 1280 by 800. Problem here is since the AMD site, that has been scoured, does not seem to have applicable drivers available as of last checking. As a placeholder the Windows 10 general video drivers do seemingly a fine job, but, at the expense it seems of native resolution being hit down from 1280 by 800 to 1024 by 640. Wi-Fi device, Intel wireless. Bluetooth, none according to BIOS settings but there is a nick that is inactive upon boot that may actually enable Bluetooth compatibility be it of only a very early adoption version of Bluetooth. Considering these original specs, startup time for its day, was considered vastly adequate for booting Windows XP and was impressive with 1 gigabit of RAM taking approximately 1 minute to boot once the annoying Dell malware would be gotten rid of. But since Windows 10 was to be tackled then a minimum of 4 gigabits of RAM would be a must to have the OS, operate, pardon the pun, effectively to say the least. So going against the norm I tried overpopulating the RAM modules DIMM slots with first 2x1GB modules then 2x2GB modules of 667MHz sodium DDR2 RAM. Great success and in turn Windows 10 would have a leg of room to stand on, with, minimum spec being met, if only just. So armed with our twink Dell Inspiron 15 year system. Consumer grade laptop we embark on Windows 10 general operation testing to see whether the Dell can still handle the evolving Win 10 5 year platform itself with a legacy 10 year level disadvantage. For testing, nothing too drastic, like Cyberpunk 2047 will be undertaken, or even for that matter crisis. 
but general true-to-form functionality such as Cinebench R15 to categorize the duo core CPU strengths while also crystal disk mark testing to see how well the upgraded SSD performs in what would be perceived to be a bottleneck system due to a lack of RAM or horsepower. First Cinebench R15 run was that of a score of 80, while the OpenGL GPU testing failed miserably, most likely the driver issue. So, so far nothing to run home screaming over, but, on or compared to the standard 120 gigabits HDD at 5400 revolutions per minute spindle drive, sequentially speaking, read and write speeds were expected to be well above that type of drive's capabilities and did not disappoint with approx 133 megabyte read and write speeds accordingly. This upgrade from spindle to SSD was the biggest impress as our sequential read and write speeds drastically improved to where the bottleneck would be the capabilities of other system hardware in turn. Bolstering our boot times from the dreary one minute of everlasting pain to a much more bearable and unbelievable 7 to 10 seconds or so, as demonstrated from cold boot. Yes, the system has had a little optimization on the back end of Windows to minimize the background apps from, at the very least, hindering startup and more importantly general performance as well. Which leads us to what the hell else is the Dell Inspiron still good for? Well, the system value is in the eyes of the beholder as running labor-intensive tasks. Any tasks will incapacitate either or both cores completely but it's not to say that it still won't perform the task, eventually.